Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on spectroscopy. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at our atoms and molecules that are in the main slide to give us all the colours that we see around them. Now, white light that we see uh, comes from the sun, and it's just really just the, the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's actually made up from many different colours. And you probably see this when you see a rainbow anyway. So it's made up of things like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, red, yellow, and violet. All having slightly different wavelengths, with red having the longest at around 700 nanometers, and violet having the shortest wavelength, invisible uh, region at least, of around 400 nanometers. Where a nanometer is just 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters or billions of meters. So when white light interacts with matter, some of the electrons in the individual atoms are able to absorb the little packets of light. We call these little packets of light photons. When an electron absorbs these photons of light, it gains energy and moves up to the next energy level or electron shell. The difference in energy between the beginning electron shell and the higher energy electron shell, if you will, is exactly equal to the energy of the photon of light. For example, if red light is absorbed by an atom, then that atom would have to have its electron shells arranged such that some of them are separated by the exact same amount as the energy of the photon of red light. So let's, let's take a look here. If we imagine this electron in the lowest shell to be in its normal ground state, we call it ground state, then when it absorbs this red light, the electron is able to move up to the next energy level like this. Similarly, when an atom is already in its excited state, that is, it's already absorbed some of the energy from the photon of light, then it can go back down to its ground state like this, but in doing so, it will have to emit some of that energy. So it does this by emitting the exact same energy as the difference in energy between the, end of the electron shells. And so, in this particular case, it will emit red light. So if we look at how atoms can absorb different colours in an electromagnetic spectrum, it can actually be quite simple if we look at this and use this kind of model. Absorbing red light requires uh, the smallest amount of energy. If we think about it, absorbing visible light, for example. Absorbing orange light requires a little bit more energy. Yellow, a bit more. And so on, and so on, and so on. And so get to violet which requires the largest jump in energy levels. Not all elements absorb the same colours, or should I say the same wavelengths of light. And that's because the difference between each of the energy levels or electron shells differs slightly from element to element. The science of studying the interaction of light with matter in this way is called spectroscopy. And when we study the absorption of light, it is referred to as absorption spectroscopy. And when we study the emission of light from matter, it is called emission spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is not just limited to the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum, nor is it limited to the absorption or emission of light when electrons are promoted, uh, that we've seen here, or demoted from electron shells. And a good example of this is infrared. So infrared spectroscopy deals with uh, the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum, looks at how molecules absorb infrared light, and we can't see the infrared light. And they do this um, by, by vibrating, and it turns out that they can only absorb, uh, absorb sorry, uh, certain frequencies in the vibrational spectrum as well. Similarly, when uh, molecules absorb microwave radiation, it turns out they absorb certain frequencies, and certain allowed frequencies, uh, based on how they rotate. Now this is really, really important for us because as human beings uh, we, we get used to colours. For example, grass is green. And grass is green, as, a, as an example, um, simply because it uses all the other colours in the electromagnetic spectrum, if you will, that we can see anyway, at least the visible part. Apart from green, it doesn't have any use for green, so it absorbs it and emits it, so it just looks green. The other colours it will use, some of the reds, some of the, the blues, if you will, as part of its biochemical processes. So, 
that's that's it for uh, this tutorial on electromagnetic spectrum and uh, spectroscopy. Do have a look at the um, tutorial on the electromagnetic spectrum itself um, as, you, as you're looking through this um, video and help you to go along with this video. And also have a look on Epistemi because we've got some downloadable worksheets so you can have a go at trying to work out the energy difference and see what see what um, emission spectra you'll see for certain elements. So that's it for now. Bye.